even when you see me with somebody living better I'm trying to tell you that me just doing me gonna have you jealous, uh I know that I YouTube Cobra family We back with another one, um So yeah, this is a very, uh, interesting one I know y'all see the title and see, uh You know, so So this is a, a Mojo video And, uh, this one is called 10 Shocking Reveals from Quiet on Set the dark side of kids. So, um, yeah, I have no idea what the heck is going on over there in Nickelodeon. Um, I know so I, I, there, there's like a lot of commotion, a lot of people upset, like a lot. It's a lot of stuff going on right now with Nickelodeon. I, I think something happened with Drake from Drake and Josh. Some happened with apparently the people off of iCarly and y'all like. Being a 90s, like, I I used to love all these shows, like, iCarly, Victorious. I watched all of them. And I had, like, a great, a, a amazing, I had a bond with all these shows, y'all. Like, these are, like, my childhood shows I grew up with. So, I'm trying to, I don't know what's been going on. So, I'm, like, I'm finna, we finna see what's been going on. I'm, I don't know if this, this video finna show everything that's going on, but... I don't know. Hopefully, we like Mojo give us like a good insight of what's going on. But and I think there's some documentary uh, documentary called Quiet on Set, which is right here, um, from the producer um, Dan Snyder. Like I've been hearing his name a lot too. So I, yeah, like I said, y'all, I don't know what's going on. I know it's a lot of commotion going on on social media in general, revolving Nickelodeon. So yeah. Um, we finna get into it, so I I don't know what to expect. I really don't. So what I first have to do, let's get right to it. For today. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're looking at the biggest bombshells from Investigation Discovery's four-part expose about Nickelodeon. Everyone knew it from New York to California. So who would we go to? Who could we possibly go to to complain about? There's something else going on with Jeanette McCurdy too. Like, y'all, it's... This. Amanda Jesus. Bynes replaced Katrina Johnson. I had less and less and less and then no time okay. with Dan. So the new favorite had arrived. I was out. From 1994 to 1997, Katrina Johnson was the youngest cast member of Nickelodeon's hit sketch comedy series, All That. During her time on the show, she was one of Dan Schneider's favorite young actors. And as she recalled in the docuseries, he even considered giving Johnson her own show. But as she got older, her appearance became an issue for the producers, particularly her weight, which they called attention to. I mean, that stuck with wow. me. That's messed up. You can't be the fat one. Like, I still hear oh those words goodness. in my head to this day. With the addition really? of rising star Amanda Bynes in 1996, Johnson felt she was progressively sidelined by- I heard some about um, I heard some about Amanda too. I heard, yeah, I don't, like I said, I heard, I, I've been hearing like bits and pieces, like not even bits and pieces. I've been hearing like names here and there, but like I hadn't really been getting to just like what's been going on, but Amanda too, like, Jesus Christ. Her former mentor, and she left the show a year later. Schneider would go on to be a significant figure in shaping Bynes' successful career, which some people, including her parents, saw as concerning. Maybe oh. at the time, people viewed it as comedy, but I think now some people are very uncomfortable with the application. Gender discrimination oh. and a toxic work environment. In the late 90s, oh. Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider created a spin-off series to all that centered on Amanda Bynes. For Christy Stratton and Jenny Kilgan, the only women in the Amanda Show writer's room, it was a dream job. I had been in LA for seven years, and so it felt very satisfying that um, someone was gonna pay me to write comedy. However, there were red flags from the start. Stratton and Kilgan were made to share one salary between them, which isn't exactly legal. And along with other female staffers, what? they allegedly endured Schneider's misogynistic behavior, degrading jokes and harassment. Whoa. Oh, I, Whoa. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I'm not, like, I'm not proud of it and I'm- Yeah, damn, buddy, this ain't looking good for you. I can't even call you buddy. <laughs> this ain't looking good for you, man. Like, what, what, what's going on in that office? Like, y'all, I'm just so, like, what is going on? And it's like all my show, all the show, like, I used to watch all of that. 
too. Like, it's like with all my favorite shows, bro. Like, dude, like, this is. I don't know, y'all. It, it's infuriating me a little bit because what's going on? And so, like, ugh. thinking about it now. Yeah, it's like, oh boy, I, I just think of that poor girl and what she had to, you know, go through. Stratton was reportedly fired shortly before the end of season one. Kilgan quit just days into season two and filed a lawsuit against the production company for gender oh, discrimination, oh. ultimately settling out of court. The awful experience had a lasting impact on their careers in the television industry. I knew that this was the end of my career, so it had better be worth it. Like, it had better stop and to learn that it didn't stop. This sucks. That it was all for nothing. Sexualizing the female casts. In the early 2020s, Whoa. people- Whoa, 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 huh? No, 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 please, no, no, no. I saw Miranda. Oh, no, 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 no. I saw Miranda. Oh, please. Miranda? What did you do to Miranda? I swear if you hurt. No, bro. I swear if Miranda got hurt, I'm going to get mad. Y'all, no. No, not Miranda out of all people. Y'all, I used to love our Carly, bro. I, I better not hear nothing about Miranda being hurt. This was the end of my career, so it had better be worth it. Like, it had better stop. And to learn that it didn't stop... I went too far ...that back. it was all for nothing. Sexualizing the female casts. In the early 2020s, people revisiting Nickelodeon shows from their childhood have noticed that some Zoe content was undeniably bizarre, bordering on the explicit. Once I saw it again as an adult was when that memory came back. So I was like, oh my gosh, she was just Zoe. I remember her, Queen. That was her name. Her name was Queen. Oh my God, y'all, Zoe 101, Memories is being, I love that show too. Oh, 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 wasn't funny. It still oh. isn't funny to me. Old webisodes oh. of Ariana Grande went viral, showing her victorious and salmon cat character, Cat Valentine, attempting to juice a potato, among other suggestive acts. Huh? Former employees also noted that Schneider was instrumental in choosing revealing clothing for the young cast and writing adult jokes into the episodes. It was clear that, that there was a permissibility around these sexualized jokes with children. It was par for the course. Like, strange things amuse Dan. And that was just one of the things he thought was funny. Prior to Quiet on Set, Zoe 101 cast member Alexa Nicholas had already been vocal about her discomfort working on the show. Although she doesn't appear in the docuseries, they reference Jeanette McCurdy's 2022 memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died, in which she detailed the creator's verbal abuse and inappropriate interactions. Yeah, like I told you, I, I, I heard like, like what went on with like Jeanette and like, that was already like a red flag because she was really talking about her mom and then talking about, I think there was something else alone. I, I don't really know, but like I said, I don't know about Dan. I know about her mom and like her kind of kind of getting treated unfairly. And then I heard something between her and uh, Ariana Grande where she was like getting a lot more shine in her and she was able to like do stuff like outside of the show and, you know, Jeanette had to kind of be there a lot. So I know, like I said, I know a little, but I don't know, like specifically Jeanette though, not like Dan Snyder. I don't know what's, I still don't know what's going on with Dan Snyder, but from what it sounds like, it sounds like he doing some pretty like weird and messed up. Like what, what? Why? I, I, I just don't understand. Like as a grown person, why kids? There are plenty grown, there are plenty, there's, there's enough grown women for grown men and vice versa in this world. Why I never, and I, I cannot, and I will never understand why when I see people with like, that are grown with underage teenagers, why for what for what reason? You with somebody that's underdeveloped? Like what? 
Like, I, I don't understand, like, why it don't click. Like, oh, man, this is wrong. I'm taking advantage of this. Like, I don't know, y'all. Like, that's that's just so, it's so weird. It's not, I, I, and y'all know, like, we don't even react to stuff like this. Like, we, we doing the music, reacting to music and stuff like this. But it's like seeing this and hearing about this. And y'all seeing it circulate on TikTok so, so much lately. Like, these past couple days, it's like, what is going on? And now that I'm actually like seeing it, it's like it, it it's 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 fr it's frustrating. It's definitely frustrating, and it's definitely annoying. Like it it, it it's like frustrating because it's like why, Dan. But I don't know. I I, I don't know y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this. He'll call people idiots, buffoons, stupid, dumb, sloppy, careless, and spineless. And then it's like when you look, hold on, wait, let, let me go, let me go back a little bit. When, when you see him, though, I think I get it a little bit. I'm not talking about the, 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 under, the kids part. I'm not, I never, I never agree with that from any, a grown person ever. But I, judging by off of how he looks, I could tell, like, oh, you must be struggling with women, Mr. Dan. You must be because he's overweight. He don't look in the like he don't look like he's. I would assume not appealing to women. I I could tell by his weight and how he's like going about things in the first place. Yeah, you you you. I could tell you struggling with women. I could tell, cause a man that like has a who's good with women or has a good you know. Who knows how to at least talk to women? You would not be doing any of this. Like I said, it's frustrating because it's like, bro, Miranda, the girl from Zoe, want like that that cast too. Like, this is like, yeah, this is the epitome of just weird. And it, like, it it more so like upsets me if anything because it's like, dang, like. Stupid, dumb, sloppy, careless, and spineless. The creator knows how to make someone feel worthless. Inappropriate adult humor. I remember someone from Nickelodeon sitting with us and saying like, oh, does this mean, you know, this dirty thing? And Dan was like, no. Why would you think that's like tainted, like you've tainted something? And they were like, okay. Kids programming tends to have some jokes and references for the parents, but Dan Schneider shows like All That and The Amanda Show often crossed a line. From character names with slang terms to costumes with phallic imagery, it was clear to some people behind the scenes what the writers were alluding to. Wait, why is this in the show? What is, what is the joke here exactly? There's this weird element of like, they all were able to like pull a fast one and get away with it. And that's like a part of the joke. Crew members and parents would notice questionable jokes and sexual innuendo, but the environment made it difficult to express these concerns, especially to Schneider. And as former cast members recall in the docuseries, they were often uncomfortable with the material, even if they didn't know exactly what the innuendos meant. I'm just looking back at it, it's just very strange. Frankly, it was just uncomfortable. Traumatizing on-air dares. Nickelodeon's on-air dare segment was essentially fear factor for kids, challenging the young actors to endure gross and scary dares on camera. I remember All that. that cast members Kyle Sullivan and Brian Christopher Hearn recounted moments on the show that made them extremely uncomfortable for themselves and their castmates. Those were particularly traumatic, and they were sort of designed to be. The whole idea was that you would have to do something scary on camera, and they got pretty scary. Hearn had one particularly awful challenge of getting covered in peanut butter and laying down as multiple dogs licked it off of him on stage. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't remember that part being there. Whoa. What? Why is this all just coming out now? Is it because of, I think some documentary, I think we talked about it earlier today uh, in the video. I think so, maybe this was from the documentary and maybe that's why all this stuff is being, being brought to light, but bro, what? 
And it, yeah, and the 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 most like I said, the most frustrating part is like this. That's not the dog's fault. It's not the kid's fault. It's the people in the production area's fault, like the grown ups. And when I say grown ups, I mean one grown up, Dan. Bro, like did like why? There's like bro, what? Who thought about this? And like, yeah, the more the more we watching this, the more it's just like inferior. It, 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 this is frustrating. And knowing like the parents couldn't really, it sounds like they really couldn't do anything about it. But I don't know. It's it's a very tricky situation because it's like it, that, it's a big massive opportunity, not only for their kids, but I mean, knowing. Kids, a lot of times they help their their parents and help their family out when they have like you know when they have this successful kind of lifestyle they they get into. So I'm pretty sure it's one of those moments where it's like okay, like we getting this amount of money, and it's like this is a good opportunity. But it's like like I said, I don't think they knew everything that was going on. Like bro, this is sick, man. In the video clip from the segment, he clearly says that he doesn't like it. I don't like this. I feel gross. See what I'm talking about? This is sick, bro. Like, this is sick. It makes me want to hit some y'all. Like, if I didn't have, like, if I didn't have my my equipment here, I, I would have been hit some. This is. Sullivan Sick, pointed bro. out just how torturous it could be, with challenges that involved worms, dead fish, and scorpions. Young viewers would likely see this as funny, but for the actual participants, it was anything but. I think that people kind of just look at us and go, you made some money, so what are you complaining about? And yeah, we collect our money, sure, but at what cost? Racist sketches starring black child actors. My time on Nickelodeon played a big part in how I dealt and still deal with racial issues. With shows such as Keenan and Kel, Nickelodeon always seemed to value and encourage diversity. But in the docuseries, all that stars Giovanni Samuels and Brian Christopher Hearn said that compared to their white castmates, they felt, quote, overlooked. I understood the magnitude of being the token black girl, but I didn't realize how significant that was until years later. Hearn recalled a hurtful incident when a strange character required him to wear a bodysuit and someone offensively joked about the skin tone color it should be. But fearing repercussions, he didn't say anything back. Whoever was doing my makeup at the time was kind of like, hand on my shoulder, like, it's gonna be okay. Like, don't worry about that he just said. Samuels and Hearn also occasionally had to play into racial stereotypes. Hearn's mother, Tracy, discussed a sketch that she viewed as racist, one where her son pretended to sell cookies but believed it was made to seem like he was really selling illegal substances. Jason Handy Allegations As a production assistant on Nickelodeon shows All That and The Amanda Show, Jason Handy was a familiar face to young actors and their parents. Speaking in the docuseries, MJ details how her daughter Brandy booked a background role in one episode and began corresponding with Handy via email. She let me read it, and it was a very innocent email. It just talked about the shows that he had been working on. But what she thought was seemingly harmless progressed into him sending her an explicit photo. And while MJ didn't go to the police herself, Handy was finally arrested in April 2003 and charged with multiple felony counts involving inappropriate acts and material. Keep your trust in God and don't forget me. You and all the kids are why I work for free half the week. I love you, Jason. He pled no contest and received a six-year sentence. Shockingly, he wasn't the only convicted predator employed by Nickelodeon. Registered sex offender Ezel Channel, another Nickelodeon employee, was arrested in 2000. What? What? So it so it went to then. It was other. Oh my god! So the, throw the whole production staff away then. Cause what the heck? Man, y'all, this is. When I tell y'all, this is like hard to watch because, like I said, like a lot of these people like. I remember them vividly watching their shows when I was a kid, y'all. Like, literally growing up with these people. 
It, like, it, yeah, see. Five. When you look yeah. at having multiple child predators who worked at Nickelodeon, it raises some confusing questions on who to hold accountable. Brian Peck's connection to John Wayne Gacy. Hi, I'm not just Pickle Boy, but I'm also a trained professional who works here on the set of all that. You can tell by my very important looking headset. Like Jason Handy, Brian Peck was well known at Nickelodeon, though the acting and dialogue coach was much more involved and even appeared on screen at times. Kyle Sullivan recalled a get-together he attended at Peck's home where he found a weird portrait of a clown. Brian got very excited when I asked him about it. He flipped the thing around and on the back it said, to Brian, I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes, your friend, John Wayne Gacy. He learned that the man had a disturbing, quote, pen pal relationship with John Wayne Gacy, a convicted serial killer who targeted young men. Even at his age, Sullivan knew this was strange. However, he alleged that other guests, including adults and parents, also saw Peck's collection of letters and art from Gacy. In his nightstand next to his bed, and he like pulls them out and starts showing them to me. Your instinct is to give someone the benefit of the doubt if you've known them for that long, even in the face of like this really bad sign. Drake Bell was John Doe. Have you ever told your story Hmm? Publicly before. I have never told my story publicly. Quiet On Set centered its third episode on Drake Bell, former star of The Amanda Show and Drake and Josh. For the first time, mm -hmm. the actor musician detailed the alleged abuse he suffered at the hands of Brian Peck as a young actor. You know. Brian. Oh, that. Okay. Okay. So. That's the. Okay. That's the. That's the go. The the adult. One of the adult producers. Brian, okay. Anytime I would have an audition or anytime I needed to work on dialogue or anything, I somehow ended up back at Brian's house. Huh? And it just got worse and worse and worse. The acting and dialogue coach became a constant presence, managing to turn Bell and others against his father, who was his manager. Don't tell me what I think. So this man, Brian, was, it, it, from what it sounds like, by hearing Drake's voice and then, like, hearing him say, like, he'd always end up at Brian's, it definitely sounds like some X-rated things happened, which it, it again, y'all, like, I just, it, it just does not make sense to me. Like, a grown person. Like, I never understand predators, y'all. Like, you're grown and you're messing with somebody underdeveloped who, who doesn't, like, not saying they can't think for themselves, but it's like they're, they're extremely easily influenced. And they don't know better. Peck was arrested just months after Jason Handy in 2003. Due to his age at the time, Bell's name was kept hidden and he was referred to as John Doe, something very few people knew until now. Fortunately, there was no therapy and was left to my own devices, which at that age probably isn't the best thing. Peck's famous supporters. Drake Bell was in attendance at the day of the sentencing for Brian Peck in October 2004. Though he was relieved his tormentor was finally caught, Bell was shocked to see the amount of support he received from notable people in the industry. First off, first off, by the way, speaking of, so some, some stuff is starting to like, some dots are starting to get connected because remember I told you, I saw like, you know, Drake, you know, bits and pieces of what, what was going on with Drake, but this is like kind of like really like unraveling what's, what's really going on with Drake. I've been seeing Josh come on my TikTok feed lately. And it was a particular video of him like saying like 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 he was saying it aggressively and mad. Like saying like, oh we ain't talked in years. Then I don't know you get to and it's like, hold on, that's that's a little weird. That's 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 very weird of you, Josh. Like that that's very weird. And then the fact that like like, it seemed, I think he was, it, it kind of seemed like he was, like, alluding to him not, it, I don't know. It, I don't know. I don't want to say he, he, he don't believe Drake, but he's definitely not, like, it's like he feels like Drake is lying. 
in a sense. I don't know, y'all. It's something about Josh's energy lately that's just like y'all know. I I read energy like like this. Like I'm I'm real quick with energy, and I could tell by somebody's actions and how they like you know how they acting. You definitely it, it's some stuff Josh not only know, but he's not gonna speak about because. I don't know. He it kind of it kind of feel like he you know maybe he got some hush money or I don't know some else, something else going on. But and then I think he said something about Jeanette too. So I was like, yeah. So I'm I'm starting to look at Josh a little sideways too now. It's like, bro, what are you what are you doing? You 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 don't have enough. Like, are you going broke or something? Like, why why do you feel the need to like? Be so hush hush about it to the point where not only are you assumingly taking this money, but you don't even want to speak up for your fellow fellow cast members. Like you don't even want to defend them. You want to defend it. Like what? You want to defend a a child? Like you want to defend a predator? You okay with that? That, like, you sleeping amazing at night knowing you defending the Predator? Like, what? A lot of stuff starting to connect now, y'all. And it, it's really like, man, this is... It's disappointing and it's inferior. It, 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 I, I, can't, I can't stress enough like, how upset this makes me, y'all. Because it's like, bro... I literally grew up like these shows were my childhood, literally a very big part of my childhood. And here all is going on. And then Drake saying like even some people were apparently defending Brian, like him having supporters in the industry. It's like, what? And he didn't say just supporters. He said like actual like other influences supporting him. Very frustrating. Cause... His entire side of the courtroom was full. Full. There were definitely some recognizable faces on that side of the room. These included Growing Pains cast members Alan Thicke and Joanna Kearns, the Amanda Show crew members Rich and Beth Carell, along with actors James Marsden and Taryn Killam. In 2024, Boy Meets World stars Will Friedle and Ryder Strong claimed their letters were based on misinformation. You know, he he had us had Ryder and I write letters of support to the judge, and these are things we did. And and again, we did them because we were then lied to. We weren't told the whole story, but it doesn't change the fact that we did it. Peck pled no contest, was sentenced to 16 months in prison, and was required to register as a sex offender. Still, he went on to work in Hollywood, even briefly on Disney Channel's The Sweet Life of Zack. No, what? So you weasel your way from Nickelodeon to Disney? Oh my God, no. Disney was another part of my childhood too, y'all. Like Nickelodeon and Disney and cartoon, like these were all like big parts of my childhood, like literally. And Cody. There are not enough protections in place to keep even convicted sexual predators off of kids' TV shows. Did you watch Quiet on Set? Let us know in the comments below. It's a house of horrors. No kidding. House of horrors. That y'all, like I said, like I, I can't even like it. <laughs> if I could hide it, I would. Like I don't know if y'all can tell, but I, that that definitely like, like I'm I'm very frustrated with it. Like there there's just no way all of that was going on. And like I said, there there's probably some most stuff I still don't know about. But like getting hearing just this stuff alone, and then like seeing what's been going on on social media too. Like pieces are starting to get put together. And this is this is absolutely and the fact is I don't know what's more infuriating, y'all. Like the fact that somebody like Dan is even like he's been doing this for years and now like 
voices are starting to like you know come out and like call him out on it, or it's the fact that like somebody like like these some people are defending, especially Josh, especially Josh, defending this man, like he's not doing wrong. Like it, like you, you, you gotta be a billionaire at this point, Josh, for you to get some kind of hush money, for you to like really, like not even have like an ounce of dignity for like your or an ounce of respect for like your, like literally the people you saw it every day. And you got the audacity to say like, bro, you got the audacity to not only discredit everything they said. But to really sit up here and like have like this stuck up, messed up attitude about it, like bro, like brother, I'm I'm be real. You lost all my respect. Like Josh, Josh Pet, he lost all my respect. There, there's just no bro. There's just no way. Like you, Josh, and it's so it's so frustrating to say that because it's like bro, he was a part of Drake and Josh. I love the whole cat. Like I love the whole show. Like, literally, like, I would watch that show faithfully. Sometimes me and my little sister would watch it together. Enjoying Dragon Josh. Like, bro. Eating snacks. And it's like, to hear you going against him and Jeanette like this. I think he, I think he's going against what Jeanette said, too. Like. Yeah, y'all. So, I mean. If, if y'all want me to, like, dive deeper into this, y'all let me know. Cause like I told y'all, we normally don't react to stuff like this, but like this is just some that like I don't even know how many people gonna come come across this, but this is it's just some like this is like way too heavy for me not to not to you know see what's up about because it's like like I said these all these shows every single last one of them from Nickelodeon to Cartoon Network to Disney literally all of them were my childhood so it's like to hear this stuff. Going on that that was going on behind the scenes. Then to see some of the people that were actually on the shows going against they like that's betrayal in like the biggest form of the word. I hope a lot of people lose respect for Josh too. Like I, I hope I hope he really lost a lot of supporters after that because that's that's really showing true colors. That's really showing your true colors and what you really think. So, yeah. And I, I don't know. Like I said, like, to to think people are actually dumb and stupid and not really catch on and stuff. Like, I'm assuming, like, because back then, y'all, nobody thought anything. And social media wasn't as big as it is right now. So, like, I've, I've always said it, y'all, and I'm going to say it again. Like, no matter how messed up, this, you know. The current generation is, like, my generation is, like, we have our mistakes. But one thing I do love about my generation is that, like, they're going to always stand up for what's right. Like, they're going to always, like, stand up for, for what's right. And they're going to always call stuff, like, you know, like, saying, hey, this is wrong. You're wrong. They were not, people was not doing this back then. But with how this generation is nowadays, they always going to stand up for what's for what's right and like do like call out people on their BS. So if it's anything, like they gon' we we stand together. Like love is love is strong. And like Yeah, so but like I said y'all this is this is this was very frustrating, honestly. Like and I'm the fighting type, so it's like if I hope I never see Dan on the street. Dan, if I see you then when I catch you, then when I catch you, oh my god! But probably never gonna catch him. To be honest, y'all, we'll probably never, never cross paths with him. But as long as he knows the energy that's being put out, hey, you know now. So yeah. But uh, anywho, that's gonna do it. And like I said, if y'all want me to like get more into it, like go deeper in like the Drake story, or y'all want me to react to some more videos on the, this situation, y'all let me know in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to. But, um, yeah, anywho, y'all, that's going to do it, y'all. Y'all stay safe. Stay out of trouble. Love y'all. And I'll see y'all the next one. The influence all the times you told me beat it. Now you got to face the music. I'm saying.